Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Welcome to our Tuesday night live Bible study. I'm Andrew Womack and we've got Carrie Pickett over here. She's vice president of our ministry. She's our host. And our guest tonight is Arthur Manges. Is that the way you say your name? That's the way you say it. I was, man, it took me 10 years to get to say that. It doesn't look anything like that <laughs> to me. But anyway, Arthur and Kathy have been friends of mine for a very long time. He's originally South African yeah. and uh, had a church over there. And I won't share all of his testimony if he wants to, but he was kind of legalistic to the point that he actually had a gun cocked and was going to end it if that's the way that it went. And Amen. God gave him a revelation of grace. And Amen. now, man, you preach the gospel, the grace of God. <laughs> and he's a regular in our school and our students just love Arthur. It's, it's really good. Thank so you. Yeah. We're going to have him minister tonight, but before he shares, I'm going to let uh, Carrie tell you about some things that are happening. So welcome to Tuesday Night Bible Study. I'll quickly go through this. Uh, for those of you that are new to watching our Bible study, then um, we want to interact with you. So tonight, um, Arthur's going to minister, and then at the end, he's going to take some time between him and Andrew asking questions, answering questions. I was going to say, I wasn't going to ask a single question. <laughs> well, I can ask Arthur some questions. So, um, so if you, whatever form that you are watching on, go down to the chat section and send in your answers. And so we'll be able to go through as many many as possible this evening. And then every Tuesday in the afternoons, we have a Q&A roundup from all of our live Bible studies Monday through Friday. So if we don't get to your question tonight, then go to Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook page, hit like, and you'll be able to hear more of these amazing answers from our ministers and teachers at Karis Bible College. So you don't want to miss that. So also one of the things that you can do is you'll be able to get notes from uh, Arthur tonight if you sign up for our Bible study notes. So if you look there on the screen, it's got the address of how you can sign up for the Bible study notes. When you do that, we also enter you into a drawing and we have a book that we always give away. So last week we had um, Spirit, Soul and Body by Andrew, one of my favorites. And then this week, Arthur actually has four different things um, that he's wanting to bless somebody. So I'm gonna let him describe what they are because they are phenomenal resources and so please sign up for the Bible study notes so you have an opportunity to get that. Also um, one of the things that we are doing here in the ministry we want to invite you to be a part of so next weekend Andrew is going to be in Atlanta and so if you're That's in the Atlanta. This weekend. It starts Thursday. This night. weekend. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, you need to come to the Atlanta GTC. And so um, if you want to know more information about that, go to Andrew Womack Ministries, so awmi.net slash events, and you can find out about that. It's a free event. So if you're in the Atlanta area or know someone, we invite you to come to that. That's going to be super powerful. Who's ministering with you in Atlanta? Um... Greg Fritz. Greg Fritz. Oh, Greg is going to be awesome. So you guys don't want to miss this. It's going to be a powerful time of teaching. And then also we want to invite you to something special here at Karis Bible College. And that is our Heart of Christmas production. This is the time to start making plans. Come to Colorado. This production is absolutely world-class, life-changing uh, about Christmas and the the portrayal of the gospel like never before. So I would encourage you to check that out. That's December 8th through the 10th. And then we also that following weekend have our live nativity. So, so much happening here at Karis Bible College. We really are excited and want to invite you to be a part of it. And again, those that need prayer, this is also another way we would love to minister to you tonight. And so call our prayer ministry 24 seven, seven days a week. Our prayer ministers are standing by to pray with you. You can also ask them for some of the resources that we're going to talk about here tonight. So, amen. And so right before we turn Arthur loose tonight, uh, you are an American citizen now, you and your wife. Congratulations. Your how many years? Eight years. Eight years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Amen. And, uh, and you've got a ministry. What's the name of your ministry? Ministry is called uh, Kingdom Life Ministry. And... Um, got a website? And a website, yes. It's either kingdomlifeministry.com or um, just arthurmainches.com. And how many books have you written? I know you're all Five. Books. I've got okay. five books. And you're uh, giving away four tonight. I'm giving away are four you trying tonight. To, <laughs> are you trying to upstage me? We just <laughs> give one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, I thought that, you know, if I'm going to put them together and what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight, 
you know, that these books will be a good resource Amen. for it's people. Awesome. Amen. <laughs> but I've been to South Africa and ministered with Arthur over there. And of course, he ministers here in our school on a regular basis. Do you know how, how, how often you minister in school? Um, I think I come um, four times a year. Mm -hmm. I think four. That's awesome. And the do. students just love you. And we both preach grace, but there's people that'll listen to Arthur and say, I get it when Arthur says it. And then there's people that get it when I say it. But, yeah. you know, God's got different people, different folks, and yeah, he's a blessing. So what do you want to share tonight? Well, um, I, I want to talk about why the Bible is important. Um, now, you know, I think one of the major uh, issues that people have or the challenges that people have uh, as Christians is that many people don't have a good understanding of the importance of Scripture, the importance of the Bible. And as a result, many people are unable to actually relate to the Bible in any real uh, or, let's say, a meaningful way. And so, um, I want to go to a passage of Scripture and begin by going there to Psalms uh, 119. Psalm 119 and verse 105. Now, the psalmist says something, and, uh, and I'm going to read this out of the, the Living Bible. And I know uh, the producers, and st they all are going to go around having to change different translations. But, but the Living Bible says it this way. It says, the, the psalmist says, your, word are a, uh, your, your words are a flashlight to light the path ahead of me and keep me from stumbling. Now, I, I like that particular one because, you know, uh, it, it makes sense. The, I think the King James it says, uh, your words are a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. But, um, you know, what the, the psalmist says here and what David, uh, is, or the, the psalmist says here, he say, it makes it very clear. He says, look, the Word of God is a flashlight that lights the path ahead of me and uh, so that I don't stumble. That means that uh, Scripture, the Word of God, uh, has a purpose in our lives. Now, unfortunately for many people, only uh, the, the only idea they have of Scripture, of the Bible, is that uh, old saying, the good book. You know, the people talk, well, you know, the good book says. Mm -hmm. And they have this good book uh, idea. Or I've actually heard somebody the other day say, well, the book of wisdom. And so, of course, but they don't acknowledge what Scripture is really about and what the Bible is really about. And so for many people, uh, it's an ancient rule book. I don't know, you know, there might be people watching today and your idea of what the Bible is or, or what Scripture is, it's like it's an old rule book. It's filled with, you know, fictional characters and mystical events or, mm -hmm. or legends. Uh, and, and, and actually, what that means is that if your view of the Bible or of Scripture is like that, then what you're just saying is that it's irrelevant, that it's uh, out of date, you know. And I hear a lot of times when I talk to people about the Bible and people will come to me and say, well, Arthur, do you, do you actually believe the Bible? You know, th don't you realize that, you know, uh, the the texts that are used are thousands of years old, written in cultures that even don't exist anymore, and all of that, you know, they have all these arguments. But even though many of the biblical writings are thousands of years old, um, reading, I believe, reading and studying the Bible, or studying the Scriptures, is still as relevant to us today as it was when it was written. Amen. And you might say, well, well, why is that? Well, I believe there are two things. And of course, you know, when we're going to talk about the importance of Scripture, there is so much that we can say. But I have a, I have a goal in this time that we're going to be together. But one of the reasons why the Scriptures are relevant 
uh, even though they might be, some of them might be thousands and thousands of years old, written in cultures and time and a time that doesn't even exist anymore, is because number one, God does not change. God does not change. Amen. That means that even though technology has changed, even though information has changed, even though the standards in life has changed, God does not change and God has never changed. And secondly, man and man's nature has never changed. And man's desires have never changed. So for me, that means that uh, when, uh, when we read Scripture, when we read, read the, 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 pa the pages in our Bibles, uh, we can uh, find out that it's as relevant to us today as it was when it was actually penned right. or put into, into uh, you know, par uh, parchments when they wrote them. So uh, it's so important that I think that people realize that. Now, it always troubles me when um, I hear people who want to deny or refute the authority of Scripture, the validity of Scripture, the integrity uh, of Scripture, just, and just because uh, it seems like, and I want to stress that, it seems like there's contradictions or there's inaccuracies recorded in uh, the Scripture or in the Bible. Well, first of all, um, the way I always tell people is this, is that we've got to remember that even though you might think that there are in inaccuracies or that there are contradictions in uh, the Scriptures, um, first of all, we need to understand that the contradictions that might exist, the contradictions or the, the conflicts that might exist, uh, uh, is, 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 is not because God's confused. <laughs> I think that a lot of people, well, you know, this makes God, no, it's not. It's, it's really, the contradictions really is about the fact that, that we as, as men have misinterpreted God in many ways. We misinterpret scripture. And uh, for me, uh, that when we talk about this, this importance of Scripture. Um, it is important to believe, number one, that Jesus, Jesus told us, he, he gave us some insight into the real benefit of Scripture. Uh, people seem to get so, I don't know about you, Andrew, but people, when we talk about the validity of Scripture or, or why the Bible is important, uh, many people will come up and they'll keep you busy with all kinds of arguments and get away from what really is important about Scripture. And, and, and I find that, I don't know if you found that, and that is that, you know, Jesus did. I believe that Jesus tells us the real benefit of Scripture. And that's really what I'd like to get in here uh, to, tonight. And uh, see, uh, in the conversation that Jesus had with his um, with the, um, uh, the, the religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees in John chapter 5, uh, is when Jesus tells us about what the real benefit of Scripture is, when Jesus said this to the Pharisees. Now, this is found in John chapter 5, verse 39, 30, and 40. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Classic. And this is what Jesus said. He said to them, you search... And you investigate and you pour over the scriptures. You diligently, and, and he, he makes it very clear, you do this diligently. And, and you know, he's talking to uh, the Pharisees. They did value scripture. Amen. And so they, Amen. they felt like they, they were the only ones that valued scripture. And he says, you search and you investigate and you pour over the scriptures diligently because you suppose and trust that you have eternal life through them. And, um, you know, as I was preparing this, uh, this afternoon to come, I, I, as I was reading that, I just really heard the Spirit of God say, if we're not careful, we can actually fall into the same trap that the Pharisees fell in. And that is, number one, is, is, is that they fell into the trap 
believing, because they used Scripture for all kinds of different things. They used Scripture to, uh, to condemn people. They used Scripture to justify themselves. They used Scripture for uh, the purpose of um, manipulating and controlling people. And I think that, that sometimes if we don't know and we don't realize and, and keep focus on what, why, why is the Bible important? Why is Scripture important? We can fall into the same trap that they did. And the other thing is they, they, they poured, Jesus said, you poured over the Scriptures thinking that in the Scripture you have life. But then Jesus said this, He says, and these very Scriptures testi testify about me. And then verse 40 says, and, uh, and still you are not willing, you refuse to come to me so that you might have life. So Jesus, I believe, makes it very clear that the main purpose of Scripture, the benefit of Scripture, the benefit of the Bible, why must I read my Bible? Why must I study? Why must I meditate in the Scriptures? Is because the Scriptures is a witness. The Scripture is a witness, a witness which declares and reveals the true God and the true Word of God, which happens to be Jesus and His finished work on the cross. And, uh, you know, Jesus, when He uh, spoke here in Matthew 11 and verse 27, um, Jesus, for me, Jesus is the living Word. And the Bible, the Scriptures, all of Scripture, combined and especially in the New Testament, is a uh, witness to reveal Jesus Christ, the true God to us, and who God really is. And in Matthew 11 and verse 27, Jesus said this. Now, again, I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. And in the Message Bible, this is how it goes. He says, Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. Man, I tell you, I, I, whenever I read this particular passage of Scripture out of this particular translation, uh, it, it really penetrates my heart because I think what this translation or the people that uh, put this paraphrase together did is to put a human face on Jesus to, to show us what He's doing. He's speaking to the people. He says, the Father has given me all these things to do and say. Amen. Boy, that's powerful. So if we go according to what Jesus said, He said, the Scripture, the purpose, the real purpose of Scripture is to be a witness and to reveal Him to us, the real God, who God, and in Him we can see who God really is. Then uh, we can put this together and say, Jesus said, the Father has given me these things to do and say. What things to do and say? To do all these things, to say what I'm saying in order to reveal and bring the revelation of the true God. See, I believe that, that uh, original sin and then the ages after that really uh, brought mankind to a place where nobody had an idea who God was. I mean, there were people who, who put forth their, <laughs> we could say their uh, um, ideas of who God is, but people didn't really know who God was. And, you know, that's, I believe, is one, one of the reasons why John, in, in uh, the, the book of John, chapter 1, verse 18, he says, No man has ever seen God at any time, but the only begotten of the Father, He has revealed Him. So we can see here that Jesus is, is talking about, uh, but I like the language that Jesus uses. My Father, or the Father, has given me all these things to do and say. And then He says, and the things I'm going to do and say, He says, this is a unique Father-Son operation, coming out of Father and Son intimacies and knowledge. 
Now, you know, I don't know if you realize what he's really doing. I think what I see here is that Jesus is saying, listen, the Father has given me all these things to do and to say, but what I'm going to do and say is always going to be within the context of father and son intimacies. That means the context of the revelation of what Jesus is bringing us is always going to be within the father and son intimacies and knowledge. That means if your view of God falls outside of a father-son intimacy, then, uh, then maybe you've got the wrong view of who God is. And then he says this, he says, No one knows the Son the way the Father does, nor the Father the way the Son does. But I'm not uh, keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. You know, I think I guess I could ask the question, are you willing to listen? Um, and, and, and of course, that's the, the true purpose of Scripture is to reveal to us. You know, even Jesus, when he spoke to his disciples, he spoke to Philip in John chapter 14 and verse 8. When Jesus, uh, when, when, when uh, Philip asked him and said, said, Lord, show us the Father and it will uh, and we will be satisfied. And the New Living Translation says, Jesus replied, he says, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you are still, or you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show you, show him to you? Don't, now this is important, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my words, but my Father who lives in me does His work through me. Now I tell you, there is just so much being shared here that Jesus said, but I think to sum, what, sum up Jesus, what Jesus is saying here, He's saying this, and my iPad just went off. Here it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For me, in other words, when, when Jesus, um, through what he did in the Gospels, when you see Jesus, when you read the Scriptures, when you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you see his life, you see uh, his ministry, you see how he deals with people, how he speaks to people, how he handles people's lives, how he teaches them, then we can clearly see who God is. Mm. You know, even, even the writer of Hebrews, and this is a passage of Scripture that has fascinated me, and I've, I've studied the, these three verses for so long, and, and every time I do, I find something. You see, the, the writer of Hebrews is writing to the Hebrews. Now, who were the Hebrews? Well, uh, everybody, I believe there's a big consensus that the Hebrews he's writing to are the, Hebrew, the Jews in Jerusalem. And so the Hebrews were the only nation that actually um, believed that they knew who God was. I mean, if you, if you sat down with the Jews or especially the the religious Jews, um, you know, they would say, well, you know, we've got a history, thousands of years of history with God. We've got the Torah. We, you know, we, we, we have the prophets. We, we've got this history of our forefathers uh, who had encounters with God, walked with God. So they, you know, they were people that, that prided themselves really upon the, the fact that they knew who God was. And then the writer of Hebrews writes to them and says, in many separate revelations, this is the Amplified Classic, in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets. Now, I mean, just to, to maybe explain what I see him saying here, is that he's saying, listen, yeah, it's true that 
these Jews or these Hebrew people, like he says, God did speak to us through our forefathers. Or we could say God did reveal himself through our forefathers and the prophets. He spoke to us. He revealed himself to us. But I like what the Amplified Bible says. The Amplified Bible really takes the Greek language here and brings out that it's not just that God has spoken, but that it was in portions of truth. It wasn't the whole truth. That means that, that he's, telling, he's telling these people, he says, he, he says, listen, you think you know who God is, but you've only been given portions, little bits of truth that you can't really get the full picture of. But then in verse 2, he says this, But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son. And, and, and again, notice that, it, that it's not he's spoken to us by a prophet or, you know, a forefather. No, now God has spoken to us in the person of a son, whom he hath appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, also by and through whom he created the worlds, the reaches of space, the ages of time. He made, he produced, he built, operated, arranged them in order. But, you know, that's a mouthful right there. But basically I, what the, the writer of Hebrews is saying is he says now, he says, yes, God has revealed himself. God has spoken to us through the forefathers, through the prophets, but it was only little bits of truth. And, you know, if, if, you, if you only have little bits of truth, you, don't, you can't really extrapolate out of there the whole truth. But he says, now God has spoken to us in the person of a son. In one other place in the Bible, it says, he is the, he is the one who comes from the bosom of the Father. Mm. In 1 John 1, 18, it says, he comes from the very bosom of the Father where he is face to face with the Father. And of course, this shows us, he's not just anybody. He's the one who is the, the lawful owner of all things. He's the one who, uh, through whom everything was created. The worlds were created. So if there's anybody who knows who God is, then Jesus knows who God is. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 3, he says, the writer of Hebrews says, he is the sole expression of the glory of God. The sole expression, S-O-L-E. He is the soul. That's an, an old, that's an old English word. We don't always use it now. We use all kinds of other ways. But soul just means only. He is the only expression of the glory of God, the light being, the outrain, the radiance of the divine. I, I was preaching in, in uh, Europe, in, in Holland, uh, about a month, month and a half ago. And my interpreter, well, because I'm from South Africa, I can understand Dutch. And so I heard my interpreter as I was, uh, you know, reading that passage of Scripture. He's the, he's the outrain, he's the light being, he's the outrain, he's the radiance of the divine. I heard my interpreter say, he glows in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I guess Jesus can glow in the dark if he wants to. But, uh, but, but what he's saying to us here is that Jesus is the sole expression. He's the, the, of the glory of God. He's the light being, the outrain, the radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint of the very image of God's mm -hmm. nature. See, therefore, I believe that what makes the Bible and Scripture important is that it is a means or the means by which we connect to the true God of the Bible. It is the true means. If, 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 if I would almost say if we use the Bible for any other mean, for any other reason, when we read, when you read your Bible, when you study, when you meditate upon Scripture, I, I truly believe our intention should be to have more revelation of who God is and, and at the same time of who we are as, 
as his children. Amen. See, I believe the, 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 uh, the scripture, the Bible gives us a measuring stick. I like, like, the measuring stick is Jesus. And, and, it, and, and once you can get a revelation and allow scripture to reveal Jesus to you, he becomes the measuring stick by which you distinguish truth from error. That's good. And, uh, and, and it tells us who God is. Now, you might say, well, why is that so important? Well, there's many reasons why it's important to know who God is. But I think that one of the big ones would be like this. Now, Andrew was mentioning earlier on, you know, that uh, in, in, you know, 30-some 30, 30 years ago, I, I was so frustrated with Christianity because uh, in a way, and it's not because of anybody, I can't say it's because of what other people said. I think it was my own interpretations. Um, I can only blame my, myself, but I, I was kind of like the Pharisees believing and thinking that my life is found within the scriptures. And so I used the scriptures for all kinds of purposes. For some of them would be formulas. And if I, if I just do it this way, then magically I'm going to get God to move on my behalf. And it brought me to a place where I realized, and I mean, it, I, it almost killed me, but uh, I realized that I had a total wrong concept of who God is. You know, uh, to, to, I don't know how we're doing it for time. Well, we need to stop and take some questions here in a little bit. Well, can I just share, have any. Can yeah, I just share this up. one? Can I, I'll finish, I'll, I'll share this one. The, the reason that I believe it's so important is that uh, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20 and 21, and I'm going to quickly read this. This is where John writes and he says, and we have seen and know positively that the Son of God has actually come to this world and has given us an understanding and insight progressively to perceive, recognize, and come to know better and more clearly Him who is true. And that we are in Him who is true. In His Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, this man is the true God and life eternal. So uh, what I see John saying here is exactly what I've been, been, been communicating here today is that Jesus has come. The, the scripture points us to Jesus so that we can see who God is, just like he said here. But what I, what I always didn't put together was the next verse. The next verse says, immediately John says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Now, you know, sometimes uh, I used to always separate those two verses. Well, now, now, now you know, uh, John is talking about, uh, you know, don't, don't have idols. And, and by gosh, nobody wants to have idols in their home and worshiping mm -hmm. idols and things. But why is he saying that? And I believe the revelation came to me you know, that, he, that he's saying, listen, Jesus has come. He has shown us who true God is and, and, and that we are in him uh, who is the true God in his son, Jesus Christ, and that he is, this man is the true God and is eternal life. And then stay, he's, little children, keep yourself, guard yourself from idols. That word idols just means a false image. That means... That this will give you the power not to have a false image of who God is. And why is that important? Well, it's important because if you worshiping God and you have a wrong concept of who He is, you have a wrong image of who He is, you might as well be worshiping an idol mm -hmm. because you're worshiping some, someone that, or something that He's not. And I, I know that that's exactly where I was those many years ago. And, and you were pastor of a church. And I was a pastor of a church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, amen. And so let me, let me encourage you, the next time you read your Bible, the next time you meditate, the next time you, you, you study or go through and just read, trust God that He would be the one to bring revelation to you, mm -hmm. to show you who He really is. 
Let it reveal Jesus to you. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, it will change your life forever. Amen. Amen. You know, I love the Word of God. And some people could take that, that, well, I'm, I'm loving the print on this page. No, I love the Word of God because it reveals Jesus. Amen. It's like if you were separated from your wife or something for years and you got a letter, you would love that because Absolutely. it's communication from the person that you love. That's right. We wouldn't even know how to spell Jesus if it wasn't for the Bible. Amen. Amen. And you know, as far as the inconsistencies or people say contradictions, I listened to Josue this morning teach in school. I sat and listened to him and he gave a great example about how that you got to take things in their context because he said That's his right. wife got up this week and texted her mother and says, I can't believe that you beat me up today. <laughs> And he says, what does that mean? And her, his, her mother always gets up before her, but that day she got up earlier. And so she said, you beat me up today. Yeah. You could take what she said and totally misrepresent right. it. Mm -hmm. And this is what people do. They pick a little scripture out and they don't know the context. But the Word of God yeah. is accurate in every detail yeah. if you take it in its context. I mean, they, they, don't, they don't take it in context. They don't take it to whom it's written. Mm -hmm. You know, and the culture it was written in. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there were some idioms in the cultures that we don't have anymore today. Well, that, you know, they made you go in and just kill everybody, men, women, children, animals. Mm. And people think that's what the Bible teaches. That was a day before people could be born again. Once you became demon possessed, it was like a cancer. You had to cut it out. Mm. And you know, I make a parallel today that some of the Hamas people that are glorying in beheading babies and burning them. And I saw one guy that had a FaceTime with his parents and told his parents, I killed 10 people today. Babies, are you proud of me? When a person so, goes to that point, they yeah. need to be taken out mm -hmm. and stuff. And in the Old Testament, that's the way it was and they couldn't be born again. And so you got to see things in its context. It's like when you cut off a part of your body because it's infected, you think that's a terrible thing to do, but it's to save the life of the person. That's right. And we've got to get rid of that. Amen. And I think a, a lot of stuff, uh, you know, God was also a covenant God. You know, uh, that means He was their God, but He was also a covenant God. And so because He was in covenant with Israel, He had to act on their behalf Absolutely. against their enemy. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, 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 I think that there's so much of the misunderstanding about those kind of things. Yeah, if you break into my house and try and affect, uh, 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 you know, attack my wife, I guarantee you I'm going to act on her behalf at your <laughs> expense. Exactly. <laughs> and I've got guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know how to That's it. right. Yeah. We, we got to go to some questions. I'm sorry, but we, Eva. we've enjoyed it. Oh. We need to some Take so we'll, we'll take some here. So Samaya on Facebook said, can you advise on how to read the Bible when you're trying to unlearn bad doctrine and relearn sound doctrine with the Bible in its true entirety? So how do you relearn from bad doctrine? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> and it's, a, it's a question that, that has so many parts to it. But my advice to anyone mm. who says, like I have a, I have a, a, a friend, uh, you know, on Facebook and, and she watches my videos on YouTube and, and then she would, now she has had a terrible experience in her past with people using scripture to, to absolutely terrify her yeah. and manipulate and control her. So she, she's got the same question. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know, what we need to do, begin, and this is what I did, is that I said, Father, I am going to start reading the Scriptures and reading the New Testament, especially looking for the goodness of God, expecting the goodness of God. And, of course, when, when uh, the revelation of who Jesus is uh, comes to you, it, it, it's like putting on a pair of glasses, Jesus' glasses, <laughs> and start reading the Scripture through Jesus' glasses. Yeah. 
And uh, I believe that that, that it will, will begin to help you. Amen. You know. And I would say to Samaya that Romans 3, 4 says, let God be true and every man a liar. So I would just say, Father, I know that some of the things I've learned are not true. So I'm going to read the Bible and I'm going to take whatever you say and I'm going to cast down every other thought and stuff. And you just make that commitment and the That's Holy good. Spirit will help you. Amen. Yes. Amen. All right, we got another really good question here. So Sam G on Facebook asked this. He says, how do you use the scripture as one's reference when sharing to someone who does not believe in the Bible? I got a great answer to that. <laughs> this is the Word of God. It's a sword sharper than any two-edged sword. If I had a sword, Arthur doesn't have to believe it's a sword for me to kill him with it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if he believed it, maybe he could respond and react. But if he didn't believe it, I could still run him through with it. So what I tell people is, I don't care whether you believe it or not. It's the truth. And the Holy Spirit will bear witness with it. And I speak the Word, and the Holy Spirit confirms the Word that I speak. So yeah. if a person says they don't believe the Word, it doesn't change my approach at all. I'll, I may not quote chapter and verse in King James yeah. if they get turned off, but I'll quote the truth yeah. The truth. yeah, and I think I think also the question is not necessarily if they don't believe that the that the Bible is the Word of God. I think if they have no reference, mm. meaning they've never read it, they've they've not had a tradition in reading it. You know, I think that that answer is still valid mm. to be able to say, well, even though you might not know what this scripture says, but let me tell you what it does Absolutely. say. Absolutely, and. And you know, the Holy Spirit bears witness with His Word. It yes. says that He will bring back to our remembrance whatsoever Jesus has spoken to us. So if you are thinking that, well, I might offend somebody if I start speaking what the Scripture says, mm. the Holy Spirit's not going to bring back just your opinion and your stuff. That's right. You need to be representing Him and speaking His Word. That's what the Lord confirms with signs and wonders yeah. following is the Word of God, not your personality. And we need yeah. to trust that the Word of God, we do speak to them. Absolutely. That the Holy Spirit will witness to in their hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, because God's not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he, he, he will witness to uh, when the Word is spoken, the Holy Spirit will witness. I've seen so many people that did <laughs> not honor the Word of God, but when I spoke it, the Holy Spirit quickened it to them, and I mean, it just convicted them. Yeah. So, man, you keep using the sword, whether they believe it's a sword or not. <laughs> That's good. So Autumn asks this on chat, how do I pour into the scripture diligently when my flesh fights back with laziness and tiredness? How do I push through and make myself get into the word? Well, I think there's, there's, there's again, there's a couple of things we can say about that, yeah. you know, is... Number one is uh, make a quality decision. Number two, I would say, is uh, where is your life right now? I mean, what's going on in your life right now? And I think that, that when we say, uh, well, I, you know, I just don't feel like it or I don't have time or whatever, to me, it's just saying where my life is right now, I'm I'm completely complacent, but if you're not, and, and I assume from what you're saying is that you want to, and you know it's good for you. It's like taking medicine sometimes. It might not taste nice, but it will be good for you. And you have to discipline yourself. You have to close your nose <laughs> <laughs> and drink the medicine. Amen. You know? And you know, it depends on what the problem is. Like if you're physically tired, Mm. and you wait until the night before you go to bed and you're already tired, well, then you ought to go to bed and get up early and study mm -hmm. the Word. You can yeah. deal with that. If it's because you uh, are, your heart's not into the Word of God, well, then the that's way you deal with that is that's different. And you make this quality decision. You force yourself. And like the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And if you will just try it, if you will go to study and God speaks something to you through the Word, I guarantee you, it, you can become addicted to it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think the other thing, and I think, uh, don't know about what you think about this, Andrew, is that a lot of people seem to think that um, as a Christian, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got to go read five chapters out of the Bible. <laughs> you know, it's sometimes yeah. it just takes, uh, I would say, just takes, <laughs> just that, that one verse that you can read sometimes. 
Sometimes you can just get a, sometimes I, I will go sit down and I'll read chapter after chapter. But sometimes I will start reading and maybe read four verses and boy, I tell you what, that, um, I start meditating yeah, on that yeah. and I start thinking yeah. and then I can close my Bible. Then I've done my, my, my Bible reading for the day. And I think, again, legalism and, and, and religion has kind of said, well, you have, to, you have to read your Bible for X amount of times or so many verses or so many chapters. Yeah. I know I was there. I mean, I, to me, it was like, you had to read, if to be a man of God, you had to read 25 chapters of the Bible every day. <laughs> no, I think everybody deals with that. Yeah. There was a time that I was going through a Bible reading plan and I had to read, I think it was five or six chapters. And I, and I just out of, you know, kind of habit, Father, I'm believing you're gonna speak to me. So I started reading and on the second verse, I saw something I'd never seen. And I put the Bible down and I was just meditating on it and God was speaking to me. And then I remembered I got five chapters to go. <laughs> and so I started reading again and the Lord spoke to me and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm reading the word. And he says, why? And I said, so you could speak to me. And then he didn't say anything else after that. And I got to thinking and I said, here I am asking him to speak to me. He speaks he to does. me on the second verse and I say, God, quit talking to me. I got five more chapters. <laughs> you, you, you're interrupting me. That's right. <laughs> Anyway, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. I tell you what, we need to love the Word of God, not because of it's just a book or a religious thing, but because it reveals Jesus. To us. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all Arthur, about. as we close, can you just mention what these topics are um, for the giveaway? Sure. And, and then if people are interested in getting more information, Amen. you can go to Arthur's ministry. Yeah, so this book, Knowing and Experiencing God, is exactly what it says. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a book that, that will help you to, to know and to experience God because a lot of people know a lot about God. You know, they know a lot about the scriptures or the, the Bible, but they don't live in an experience with God. And it comes with a workbook with 22 lessons in the workbook. People use this sometimes for Bible studies. Um, uh, again, you know, people use it in, especially in uh, rehabilitation facilities. This is being used a lot because people can, can uh, go and know about God, but get to experience Him. And then this one is uh, the uh, Who is Man? Uh, discover Your Divine Identity. And uh, this is on identity. So the one thing we spoke about today is that Jesus is the one who reveals to us who God is, and, but He also reveals to us who we are. And then this, the little book on discover true love. And, uh, and that's just really discovering Jesus is to discover true love. Mm, that's yeah. good. So once again, we've got, uh, do we have His website up there? What is it, Kingdom? KingdomLifeMinistry.com. And we'd encourage you to go yeah. there and I tell you, he's got a lot of material and I've ministered with Arthur a lot and he's a powerful minister. You'll Amen. be blessed. So thanks, Arthur. Thank thanks you. For coming. Thanks, Andrew. Amen. Thank you guys for watching Live Bible Study. Don't forget to check out our daily Live Bible Studies. So Wednesday morning, 7 o'clock, Thursday in the evening at 6 and then Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning. So we'd love for you to join us. God bless you. And again, check out EWMI.net to find out about our events and call our prayer line. We would love to pray with you. And today. we've got that prayer line number up there. If you want to call right now, we're open 24 seven and people will be there to minister to mm -hmm. you or help you to get material that'll help you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Gospel Truth Conference has just been incredible. You can feel the truth coming out and you can feel your spirit saying, this is the truth. Your spirit, it is united with Christ. They are one in the spirit realm. You are identical to Jesus, ounce for ounce, molecule for molecule, because it's Jesus living on the inside of you. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 